the date I say it was concrete that there was a coup and we lost our government was uh, November 22nd. Yes. Know, the assassination of Kennedy. And uh, so I should just say you're, you're talking about the great surreptitious coup, Who Stole Western Civilization? Yeah. That you've written. And, th- and I've read a lot of it. And you say two things that people may not know. One, you were in Texas the day of the assassination. You were a senior flight surgeon at an Air Force base, I think, in San Antonio. Right. And you saw Air Force One fly over like hours before he was killed. So that was amazing. Right. I I was uh, being the chief uh, 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 flight officer didn't mean a whole lot. Oh, well, it sounds impressive. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like that. But I didn't want to make it sound like oh, I was in charge of Kennedy's safety or something. <laughs> so anyway, I was told uh, to just be alarm, all alert to the fact that Kennedy's going to land. He does a little bit of business. Uh, he went to the Space Center, I think at Brook Air Force Base. And, uh, and then then he uh, then he took off, and I think he was on his way to – he had a busy two days in there. So he, he takes off, but uh, I know how busy I was doing flight surgery work because when he took off, I was on the golf course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they might say I was AWOL, yeah. but there was nothing I could do. So, uh, But I remember it distinctly because uh, I kept thinking, well, maybe I should be down on the flight line, you know, this sort of thing. But I was real close. I was like a quarter mile away. So I was there, and I saw Air Force One take off. And I thought, you know, I stopped and looked and looked, and I thought, I, I was so impressed. And then uh, what I write is, it never did I think that within 24 hours, this world would change. Yes. It was less than 24 hours by the time he was killed, because I think he stopped uh, in San Antonio, then he came back to Fort Worth, and then he ended up in Dallas. So you you say in this, and I don't think it's a controversial statement anymore, but the CIA, of course, was involved in his murder. Alan Dulles, the director who he'd fired a year before after Bay of Pigs. Um, but you, you, you make a point I've never heard before. You said you believe that his fate was sealed on June 10th, 1963, when he gave the commencement address at American University. Fairly famous speech, which I plan to watch tonight, actually, uh, about peace. Tell us what you mean. Well, it was a peace statement. It was great. Kennedy was controversial. He wasn't always anti-war as he was leading up to his death. Yes. So he had... He had some foreign policies that I wouldn't be endorsing, but he was he was coming this way, and that's when uh, he he um, he said that uh, you know he said flowering things about peace, and uh, it, it became known then because he did speak out, and I think it wasn't that many days you know before his assassination, but they were the, the establishment, the FBI and the CIA, the planners really soup things up for for their plans and uh he was uh uh you, you know ki- killed uh by people that for a long time you know probably several years i thought it was oswald you know you did yeah because i wasn't i wasn't i didn't i wasn't in a place i was about to challenge it i it didn't take long to start questioning this the one thing that Another personal thing that came out was, you know, uh, after after 10 years, uh, they had a group of the best uh, pathologists in the country get together. And one person in that group was Cyril Weck. And Cyril, yeah. Cyril Weck was from the University of Pittsburgh. And I had heard lectures from him because I was OB resident. And as a pathologist, he would give us lectures. So I, I, I sort of when you were in medical school, yeah, when I, re- I was doing my, my doing my residency, but there were twelve of them, ten maybe, but there was a group, and they all and they had this going over, you know, the uh, assassination, and the, all the experts were there, and everybody says Oswald did it, <laughs> even this, and this was like eight or ten years later, except. Uh, uh, Except the, the, the Cyril Weck. Zero, except for Weck, he said it can't be one shot. And, but he said that from the very beginning. So he was he was finally allowed to examine the paperwork uh, of the auto- autopsies. He was the I think the only one, and he went. And guess what he discovered? No records existed. 
<laughs> can you believe yeah, it? Yes, I can believe, you believe it. That? I can believe it. What's, uh, so you served in Congress, I think twice, as I remember, but for, for a while. Uh, I, I, w I was drafted in 60, uh, 63 uh, during the uh, Vietnam thing. I didn't go to Vietnam. Uh, I was drafted then, but then they, the, the government really messed up my schedule. They took me out of the middle of the residency, and I had to go back, and I had a break of six months. So I was very pragmatic. I said, why don't you just discharge me in six months? So I stayed. So I was there two years plus six months, and then I, then I was in the— uh, National Guard. But but in all of your time in Congress, did you ever come across other members of Congress you served with who said, wow, you know, the CIA was involved in Kennedy's assassination? Was this widely known on Capitol Hill when you served there? I never heard anybody say that. Anybody? Well, probably I heard my, my close friends. <laughs> 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 it's just funny that, um, again, now I think people recognize that that's true, but that was 60 years ago, yeah. and our lawmakers never talk about it. But you mentioned to me earlier and brought back in memory, but do you know who they appointed to the commission? Alan Dulles. <laughs> to he was on the Warren Commission. Yeah. So the guy who was responsible for the murder. He probably was the most <laughs> was investigating the that's murder. When, then when that's a dawn on me. The the uh, the republic is gone. <laughs> That's when I said the day it ended. It it was eroding from the beginning of the last century, you know, yes. with the philosophic changes. But uh, I think I think uh, it, it's still. What well, what about that uh, former FBI or CIA agent said we we were taught to lie, cheat, and steal, and then he giggled and the crowd clapped, and he was making fun of it. So. It does make you wonder if, if you know, people want to be uh, free. Um, so I'm sorry to jump around so much. I'm not a linear thinker. But um, just back to the economy really quickly. You uh, have always been a proponent of owning gold, physical gold. Uh, and you said this for many, many decades. Has that been a uh, – do you still believe that? And has that been a good strategy, do you think, over time? Yeah, yeah. But, uh... So, so I'm not like a gold bug that gold is right. sacred. No, gold can protect you from inflation. It's been known for 6,000 years yes. doing this. So, yes, that's, uh, I think that that is the case, that you you can be uh, protected. But that what I would tell the students that are looking for ways, I said, but you can do that. You can have your gold. You can have food. You can have your cabin and, and guns and all this. I said, but it won't matter if you don't have your freedom. Yeah. If you don't have your First Amendment, see, I think the First Amendment is so powerful. But uh, if you don't have that, what what good do I do? And go out and I, I say, oh, I I, ha I have gold. But you know, talking about buying gold and preparing for gold, uh, I don't think I broke any laws on this, but I'll tell it anyway. <laughs> the um, you know, it was illegal to own gold. Yes. And in the late fifth, uh, late sixties. Uh, people were buying gold shares, gold stocks, because their price would go up when gold would go up. Because people were betting that thirty-five dollars an ounce wouldn't last, and then then <laughs> they Nixon, were right. Then Nixon proved it didn't last, but people didn't have gold, so he closed the he closed the gold window. But in that period of time, I don't have the dates, but before it was uh, uh, officially legalized, you were allowed to buy, buy numismatic coins if you were a co coin saver. That yes. was a, a technical way you could get around it. So I remember my first gold coins I was buying, not for numismatics <laughs> reason, <laughs> but they, they, were the, they were some of the neatest coins I got. And, and the, the Mexicans were way ahead of us. They started minting coins and put a back date on them. <laughs> so, you know, so they, for, they fulfilled the requirement of only old coins that were numismatic. So... Uh, if, if you they, you couldn't buy a coin that was uh, if I bought them in say 1969, I can't uh, buy a coin that would be minted that year. Yes. So Mexico would date them back down to the 1940s. <laughs> so to, that that made it illegal. <laughs> so those were my first coins. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. The internet is crowded with interesting things that don't really matter. On TCN, we attempt to bring you interesting things that actually do matter, and a lot of them. Interviews, long form and short, videos, documentaries. You can find all of it on TuckerCarlson.com, and we hope you will.